weird fucking guys. You're doing a manly thing and you're a fucking dork. I got my lightsaber wearing my Pokemon hat today. <laughs> Wow, you're a real renaissance man, you know that? Goddamn man-child. What a fucking dork. Yeah. But he's our dork. This is not for children. Hello, John. What's up? I really like our intro music. Do you? Like, not to like toot my own horn or whatever, but it's, I like that. I like the end of it where the, the little chord changes come in. Yeah. It goes from like, I forget how I played it, but I like it. I like it a lot too, man. Um, nice Not to bluesy. toot my own horn. Nice and bluesy. But I really feel like I am a good fucking editor. Yeah, you do a nice job. I mean, you took a fucking shitty phone recording. And made it it's really not that good. shitty. It's no, really, they're decent quality, I guess. It's clean sound. Yeah, but you know? it's just, I don't know. Like, they're just dick around, like, little snippets of me playing guitar. I mean, I can't hear, like, fucking King of the Hill or Family Guy in the background, so that's, that's yeah, pretty good. You, you know? can hear, like, the TV. You can't hear it, or you can? You can't. Oh, you, you can't, can't. because no. the TV is on all the time when really? I'm playing guitar, yeah. Yeah, but you can't hear it that well. The, it's good because the phones isolate the sound, yeah. you know? So. <sighs> <sighs> So this it's is, uh this is what we do, dude. Yeah, I know. We've been doing a lot of talking before the episode. We did, man. Yeah. We did. We talked so much shit on so many people, dude. Yeah. Everybody I know, my wife, my kids, my mom. You talked about some people too. Yeah. Yeah. Assholes. Yeah. I hate people. I'm just kidding. We didn't no. do any of that. I don't know, man. Yeah. I was like, uh, I was all excited. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> fucking guy. Ugh. You got a fucking... I got a guy fucking texting me. Say say stuff into the microphone while I, while I while do While you text other somebody? Stuff, like a fucking amateur jerk-off that I am. Eight o'clock in the morning on a to, fucking Sunday. You might have what to dial fuck? it back and edit something here. <laughs> Just a tad bit. Uh, Woo! So... Listen, I just said that I'm a great editor, but I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I ain't editing shit. You don't like that. <laughs> you don't like to edit any of the content in the show. <laughs> I ain't editing nothing. If you accidentally drop a racial slur, well That's on you. I guess the woke community better not pay attention that day. Yeah. You know? That's on you, buddy. I hope somebody listens to this and they're gonna go, and they're gonna go rolling back through all of our yeah. episodes to hear if we I accidentally know they said, said something you know, stupid. Somewhere. He said something so fucked up. Inflammatory. You know? Get on Twitter or X, as they call it. Yeah, what now. is it? Why is it called X now? Because Elon Musk bought it and he wanted to like, dude. He just he wanted to brand it his own. I don't know, man. That guy took Twitter and was just like, "Fuck you, man. I'm just gonna make it whatever I want it to be." X. So he calls it X, which I think is really dorky. Yeah, I think it's corny as hell. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, I just, fucking dumb. But it's really him trolling leftists. Bitch, you corny. Dude, he gets on there and just fucks with people. Yeah. Which, I was thinking the other day, I'm driving past a Tesla and I'm like, dude, that guy is a secret genius. Well, he's not a secret genius, he's absolutely a genius. But he sells cars to the left yeah. And then gets on Twitter and talks shit on them. Yeah, because a Tesla seems like something that like a, like a true lefty would be like all about. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. are. They do yeah. love them. But then, like, he gets on there and he breaks their balls about everything, you yeah. know? So. Well, I think, like, you know, I don't know. I think there's, like I said, you got to meet somewhere in the middle. Like, you can't be so fucking hard left and so hard right. Well. But that's all anybody is. I don't think he's. I don't think he's conservative. I think he just. I think he's one of them guys. I think a lot of people, the upcoming election, dude. So many people have reached out to me, and they're just like, I don't want neither. I don't want neither. I don't want fucking Biden. I don't, want, I don't want. I don't Trump. want Biden again, and I you don't know? want Trump again. I really don't. You know, I don't want neither one of them. I'm fucking tired. You know. And I think like the problem with Trump is he just comes off so unprofessional, dude. and like. 
is so uh, like abrasive and such a spectacle. Dude, it's, it's just so polarizing. As much as I talk shit, that guy puts me to shame. Dude. I mean, like, it's I kind of, you know what's crazy is when he was president, I didn't like him. Yeah. Because he just, it, it annoyed me, like, to that extent. But, like, now that he's not, and I go back and I watch, like, the footage, I can, like, laugh at it. Yeah. And I kind of, like, laugh when he, like, pronounces Puerto Rico, like, sarcastically. He's like, Puerto Rico. Like, I'm like, what a dickhead, but it's funny to me. <laughs> But, like, it's not funny if you're, like, a world leader yeah. doing that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, like, uh, but Biden is just, he's de- he's got dementia, dude. dude. There's no fucking doubt about it. This dude does not have his mental faculties. Biden is a fucking Manchurian candidate. That's crazy. And the people around him are telling him what to say and what to do. Yep. Uh, and it's just it's- all detrimental. The first year in office was, like... Jesus Christ, man, you're just fucking everything up left and right. I don't know. And you know what's crazy about politics to me, and especially the voters and how fucking insanely loyal yeah. they are, is that, dude, you can't even, like, you can't even go and say, like, dude, come on, listen, I hated Trump. Me, personally, as a middle-of-the-road guy or a third-party guy, whatever, I fucking despised Trump and his divisive, mm-hmm. arguing, shit-talking, Dude, you look like a fucking five-year-old that's like, man, man, see, I got the toy and you didn't, yeah. you know? And it's like, dude, I need you to fucking be an adult right now, you know? Right. But, but he would start so much shit, but then he did do some good things. Like, I'm going to fucking say it, dude. I had a fucking savings account when that fucking jerk-off was taking care of the economy. Right. And I don't now. Yeah. And for... Leftist fucking dickheads that are like, no, I, everything's so much better. See how everybody's getting along? I everything be, is so expensive right now. Dude, I gotta be honest. Everybody's getting along because we're all broke as fuck. Yeah. And we're ready to, like, fucking have an uprising against the government if this continues. Dude, there are black dudes in the hood, in the fucking hood, like, scary-ass dudes that are like, fuck Biden, I'm done with this shit, you know? People are kind of fucking done with it, yeah. you know? And, and I don't know, man. It seems to be like... I talked to somebody the other day, and they were like, if Trump gets in office, there's going to be fucking riots. If Biden stays in office, it's going to get so bad. We're going to have a Great Depression. It's yeah. going to be really fucking bad. Everything you know? is so expensive. So, Everything. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what the solution is. I will fucking jump on an airplane and go to Portugal and start over, dude. I'm not fucking doing this, man. I mean, it's not, you know, an option for most people, you know? Well, I know. Man, that's why you're fucked. I'm out of here, bud. Yeah, man. You're going to have to do this podcast I'm going to have to be the fucking (laughs) lone man You can squat in this fucking house if you want. Uh, uh, I will. (laughs) I will. Woo! So anybody that thinks anything about politics just fucking tuned out right then. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. That you seems cunts. to be that seems to be like nobody wants to be like in the middle of anything. They just don't want to they just like I don't agree with that and I don't agree with that. We just shit on both parties. Yeah. Like they're both, both of jerk offs. Yeah, they're yeah. all like and that's the truth. Is like you're what corrupt fucking party do you want to fucking vote for? That's really what it is. I don't care what your ideals are. Ultimately you're voting for something corrupt, you know? I mean, isn't that really how, like, uh, that's probably how the Roman Empire went down, honestly, is it got so bad that there was just no, nowhere else to go but yeah. to divide up and, and become something else. It just bothers me. Like, you, like know? you know, like, we sit down here, you got a big old American flag behind you. I do. You know? It almost feels like the American flag has become... A symbol for conservatism. So is and it's like that's fucked up. So, like, dude, I have thought about taking it down because for that I exact reason. Yes, that's fucked up. Which really fucking goes up my ass because I'm a U.S. Army veteran. Yep. And dude, if people like if we did video content and people saw, they this would immediately studio, assume. They would think, like, okay, he's got to have, like, a Nazi flag hiding in the background. And it's like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Why are you associating these two things once upon a time? They have nothing to do with one another. Yeah. You know? 
I don't know, man. So many times over the years, when I used to be really heavy into the libertarian content and I thought about doing like a specifically libertarian podcast, I thought about doing like social media content and like going out and talking to people in in, in like, you know, minority communities and like impoverished communities and, and really just like ask them how they felt about the flag, ask them if they wanted one, give them a little, like the ones you stick into the ground, mm-hmm. give, give them a little flag, ask them about it, ask them if they would, uh, you know, want that on their lawn and then like explain to them you know that like dude this is your flag you live right. here it's not you don't have a british flag you don't have a fucking you know you can like all of those other flags the gay flag go to the gay neighborhood and try to explain to them why don't you have an american flag mm-hmm. what the fuck is this flag that you're flying what is it for this is not a country this is not where you live it's not your neighborhood it's not your city it's not your state it's nothing why is there no American flags here? You're not an American? Right. You don't celebrate 4th of July and eat fucking hot dogs and hamburgers? Like, you're an American, dude. It yeah. doesn't... Whether you like it or not... This is your fucking country. This is you. This is the system you know? you're in. Like, in fact, you as an activist... I know a lot of gay people that are activists, and it's like, dude, you as an activist... You're you fighting, take, you're you fighting to, to make yeah. our country better. You so need you to take ownership of, of your flag. Yeah. Take ownership of it. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. So. Things like that really irk my fucking soul. Yeah, man. Like, it's, just it just irks my soul that, like, people look at an American flag now and are like, they just associate it with being largely right wing. So, you know what I was thinking the other day? And this, maybe this is the episode that'll get me in a lot of trouble. But this is a joke that I've been working on. But just, But bear with the thought here. The problem with the American flag being divisive now is because during the riots, leftists and protesters were burning flags. Mm -hmm. And the right-wingers, the conservatives, they started waving more flags in spite of. Right. So they they took this idea and they... They weaponized it, and they used it to their advantage. Oh, you don't like flags? Great, we're going to put fucking flags everywhere. So lately I've been thinking, like, dude, the leftists, and specifically the gay community, need to learn how to do the same thing, fight the same way. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you don't like the Proud Boys or Neo-Nazis or Skinheads or the Ku Klux Klan or whatever... Any organization that is, you know, uh, toxic masculinity, call them faggots. Right. Like, call them faggots. (laughs) Rebrand the name. Rebrand the word. (laughs) Just, like, openly just bash them. Just bash the shit out. Every time the Ku Klux Klan wants to walk through New York, say, hey, you fucking faggots, and just fucking beat them to death with it. And just, like, cheer, throw dildos at them. Like, (laughs) dude, if you fought back the same way, first of all, first of all, it would ruin them. It would ruin, dude, like, fucking spray paint them with, like, pink and shit. Anything you can to, like, bash their masculinity, they would fucking crumble. They would be like, oh, oh, what are you doing? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know? And, like, (laughs) dude, it would, first of all, I mean, I'll be honest, because I'm slightly selfish. This would be fucking hilarious. I mean, that's... But it would also... In ruin. theory, it makes sense. In theory... See, like, a lot of people will hear not that. A, it's not a theory, and I know people are going to hear this. Like, a lot of people are going to hear it, and they're going to hear the, the word, and they're going to go, what the fuck? Yep. But, but the, you're gay, fa- so you can say it. No, but the truth... <laughs> but I'm saying is, you know, if you call, like, a dude who's not a bitch a bitch... Yeah. He's going to get real fucking offended. Exactly. You know? So, if somebody's idea of that word is the most derogatory thing that you can say and you use it against them, it's going to fucking hurt them a whole lot more than it's going to hurt you. So, that's what I'm trying to illustrate. I'm trying to, like, put it out there as, like, a disclaimer because I think people are going to go, I can't believe Chris just said that or whatever. Yeah, but you know know what, though? Like, I think you have to learn how to fight the fight and take the words have definitions. Yeah. The definition is not just some shit you read in Webster's. It's the social known uh, definition of that word. It's context. So when we say that, when I, I'm the one that said that word. When I say that word, 
everybody in their head goes, yep, I know exactly what that word means. Yeah. Although words often change definition. I'm reading a book that was written in the 70s, and the guy says faggot in it quite often, and he's talking about sticks. Yeah. Because he's describing this uh, fantasy land with, like, knights and wizards and bullshit, and every time he says it, I'm like, oh, oh, what the fuck? And then yeah. I'm like, oh, wait, this is a different time where the word really didn't mean what, what it, it means now, right? Yeah, you know? So, like, that's kind of what gave me the idea that, like, Rebrand it. And it isn't a theory. It's a proven thing that happened for such a small moment, but nobody ran with the ball. Yeah. So the gay community started using the hashtag Proud Boys on a lot of the gay content. So Proud Boys, who were following Proud Boys hashtags... We're starting to see a lot of gay content. Which I think is yeah. fucking great. Right. I think that's hilarious, yep. you know? So it went. It works. Yeah. You know, you're gonna stop using the Proud Boys hashtag right. if you think that it's gonna pull up a bunch of gay content. You know. <laughs> yeah. I think you just need to go further and harder and nastier because your opponent is Mike Tyson and you're trying to fight him with fucking flowers and it's not yeah, working. Right. You know, you think you're gonna tell the principal, but it's not working man yeah you, you can't know? be you can't be in a fight with with a tyson and be a, like a a quote unquote boxer you need to be Dude. a brawler you need to be a powerhouse so that's yeah. when it comes to verbal confrontation which i'm really good at i am not quite mike tyson but i'm a golden glove champ in this area that's for fucking sure mm -hmm. you know it's kind of a known fact that like if you come and run your mouth i'm a ball buster and i'm going to light you up yeah. you know and I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think verbal dialogue and, and these uh, shit-talking moments are good. It's an indication of intelligence, of how clever you are. You know, like, to me, it's it's how I gauge people. You know, how clever of a joke can you tell? Right. And come up with it off the top of your head. Not some joke that you heard in a bar somewhere. That's hard to do now, because people are just scrolling around on their phones, and it's like... Well, you can always tell, though. Like, oh, no, like, you uh, can. You like, can. When you meet a dipshit conservative that's like, let's go, Brandon. And that's the corniest the back of his... fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Dude, you're attempting to be funny or, yeah. or snarky. I think and it it's the such corniest a... shit in the world. Dude, I think we talked about this before, how yeah. corny it is. Ten minutes after fucking Biden said it, it was old. Ten minutes after he well, said it. Well, it was a NASCAR thing. Yeah, I know. It was like yeah. everybody was saying, fuck you, Biden, or whatever. Yeah. But the guy who was announcing it was like, they're saying, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> so it like, became like a conservative thing to be like, yeah, let's go, Brandon. Yeah. Like, it's like a fuck. It's just so fucking corny. Like, I guess it was clever for about ten fucking minutes. But if you're going Well, it's out, passive aggressive. Yeah. You know? so it's My like, thing is, is like, I hate anything that anybody can make any money off of. In that yeah. regard, like, if you can make money off of somebody's ideals, I think that's kind of like this bottom-dwelling kind of thing. Like, uh, I don't know, like, when I go into, like, a Michael's or, like, a fucking whatever store, and you can buy, like, a thermos that has, like, a rainbow flag on it that says pride. Yeah. Now, I get that it appeals to somebody's ideals, and they're like, yeah, I want that, you know, because I stand for that or whatever. Okay, that's great that you stand for it or whatever. But realize that once you fucking pay for this, some fucking jerk off somewhere is profiting off of it. And he don't give a fuck about your pride. Sure. You sure. know, like he don't yeah. care about your pride at all. All he cares about is that you're fucking the same company throwing that makes down American $10 flags. to buy a thermos. Yeah. The yeah. same same company that makes American flags or some conservative let's go Brandon flag or the uh, NRA flags. The same company that makes them mm -hmm. also made your gay flag. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and, exactly. And so it doesn't fucking matter. All now, it is, it makes you divisive with other people that yeah. are on your same level. Yeah. And some other jerk-offs getting fucking rich off of you. All yeah. of you. All of you. Well, <sighs> I don't know, man. I think yeah. it's all, uh, I don't know. Silly. Yeah. Well, Silly. It's all going to fall the fuck apart, my bud. You know, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be um, Pennsylvania and, and maybe a few other surrounding states. Well, Pennsylvania will probably be its own country, you know. <laughs> Texas will be definitely its own country. Texas is like, fuck Mexico. We're still building the wall. 
but we're going to build a northern wall too because we're tired of you people also. <laughs> Texas is going to be its own thing. Hawaii's been waiting for a fucking long time. Dude, they're going back to an empire. They're going to be yeah. like, we got a king again, man. They're fucking excited, you know? Yeah. But the U.S. government keeps burning their houses down, so, you know. You think that the U.S. government's burning their houses down? <laughs> is this a conspiracy on your part, dude? I don't know, man. I, I met this this fucking crane operator the other day. I knew him. I knew of him, but, uh, you know... I only get to see these guys for small windows of time, an hour or two. Right. And I show up, and it's a, it's a tower crane. So I climb up top. I open up the door. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? You know? <laughs> and I'm going to play anonymous. I don't want to say his name or not because I don't want to give the guy a hard time or nothing, you know? But, like, he's looking out his little window. He's got his little joysticks to control the crane. And next to his fucking head is his cell phone, like, kind of propped up. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like what the fuck is he watching? You know, it's like fucking people talk and it's stupid shit. And it's just like, then I realized like, oh, it's some kind of weird conspiracy shit. Like he's, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's cool. We, we got some Alex Jones going on there. And I'm like busting his balls a little bit. And he's like, he's like, looks, he looks at me and kind of looks at me all goofy. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and like, I think he's gauging me. Like, what, what kind of person are you? Are you like, can I let you in? So then he starts, <laughs> well, no. Then he starts, like, fucking busting my balls back a little bit. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, you're fake-ass fucking president. Nobody voted for him. And he didn't really win. And, rah, rah, rah. and I'm like, uh, oh, wait. So now you, like, in my head, I realize, okay, what's happening here? Oh, he thinks I'm a leftist. Right. Like, he thinks I'm, like, a Biden supporter, you know? And I'm like, I started laughing, and I was like... Whatever, man. I didn't. I didn't fucking vote for him either. I'm. A, I'm a fucking libertarian. I'm a third party guy. So like, I don't know. That's your fucking fault. I guess you didn't get enough votes. You know. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess you guys didn't cheat enough. You know. Like they cheated more than you. You know. And he was like, oh, oh, they fucking cheated. We don't fucking cheat that. This bullshit mailing fucking ballots around in fucking Florida around and it's like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, here... Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up. I shouldn't have fucking said anything. Yeah, you know? it's almost like, just let me stay out of this so I don't... I can avoid this. But I find, like, a lot of these people that are, like, conspiracies, like, they're, like, all about these conspiracies and shit, it's like, a lot of them that I talk to are, like, people that don't have a whole lot going on in their lives. Like, they're kind of just, like, they have too much time to think about things like that, and it's like... You know, there's people out there that are, like, trying to survive, trying to just get by, and they don't have time to think about, you know, who's doing this or that, and it's like, and they go, well, that's what they want. That's what they want to have happen, and it's like... Who the fuck is they, man? Yeah, who are they? You know what's crazy to me? Who are they? Dude, it's crazy to me that uh, I bumped into a guy that was a flat earther, and I thought he was fucking around at first. I thought. I thought he was joking. I thought I'm like, dude, there's no, no, no way, man. Like you're not, you're not fucking, fucking for real right now. Like, like, I don't know what to say anymore because this is a person that I kind of held in high regard, and I was like, yeah, that's the worst when you like respect somebody and then they say something like wild and you're like, whoa, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, man. So, so, but it's always they. Yeah. They are trying to. So I noticed because after this person said some shit to me. Not that I'm skeptical that the Earth is flat. Uh, to, dude, to me, I don't have time to waste on such a stupid fucking idea, you know? But I was skeptical, like, how does that come about? So I started diving into, like, documentaries or docu-series where they talk to a lot of flat earthers, and I was like... I was kind of blown away because there was like, when you single it out to the lowest common denominator of what is this belief structure, what do you guys really fucking believe? Like, why is the earth flat? Why do you think that? And it always comes back to they are trying to control us. It's this paranoia that somebody is trying to control you. But so then I talked to this person again that I know and I started laughing and I said, yeah, they are trying to control you. In fact, worse yet, they have control. It's right. too late. They already have control, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'll prove it to you, and I'll prove that it doesn't even matter what shape the fucking earth is. You can't leave no matter what. Yep. If it was flat, a triangle, 
a fucking trapezoid, or a circle. You're still here. You're still stuck on yep. it. And there is nothing you can do. <laughs> Your YouTube channel is not going to make a fucking difference of you leaving this trap that they have you in. So, like, my theory is, is look at the pretty flowers, take walks on the beach sometimes. And appreciate what it is. Just... I mean, dude, I don't know. There's some really beautiful be parts of this fucking while. trap, dude. Like, yeah. dude, it sounds so stressful, yeah. man. I mean, when they're tr- they're trying to like when people go, well, they're trying to control you. No, it's not so much that they're trying to control you. It's their structures, their yeah. constructs that have been put in place. That it just is what it is, and you know, if you don't want to adapt to it or you disagree with it or whatever, like just i don't know what to tell you like you're kind of like you said you're stuck like this is what it is i don't know man so i think what happens there's ways to avoid things like that's why we go on like vacations or we fucking explore other parts of the world or we travel or you know because yeah it it fucking bogs you down so this is this is a thing because lately i've been uh now i don't know if uh i we discussed this on any of the episodes but the idea of feeling trapped, okay, so like a person feeling trapped, I understand that. I understand feeling like you are uh, binded by the shit that you own, the house, the everything, yeah. your kids, everything, you're trapped in your situation. And the thing is, is I'm a firm believer that you can change all of that, you just have to be willing to make some really extreme changes. Dude, for shits and giggles, I watch people that live on a fucking sailboat and live off of, like, a thousand bucks a month. And it's just, like, a rental property that they own. Not a lot of rental properties. Just one, you know? Just one rental property that gives them a little residual income. They go fishing. They have fucking fruit on the boat that they fucking grow themselves. You know, there's another guy that lives in Canada up on some river that he made this barge and an abandoned boat that he found. Everything is found. He found everything, and he lives on this fucking thing with his girlfriend and his dog, and he grows vegetables and fruit. He goes into the woods and hunts and fishes, and he lives for, like, nothing. I think he said he's, like, dude, for, like, monthly expenses, under 500 bucks. Wow. You know? And he's like, yep, wintertime, sometimes it's motherfucking cold out here. You gotta stockpile food. I could fucking die. I'm aware of that. But he's not trapped. He doesn't feel trapped. He wakes up every day. He stretches out. He yawns. He's like, oh, man, another beautiful fucking day on this river, you know? Yeah. But meanwhile, us consumers that buy material fucking things, I'm looking around the room right now at all this shit, I feel trapped by it, you know? I feel like that a lot, too. You know? And you think to yourself, like... like The only way to be free is to not have anything. Well... And once you don't have things or, or you don't have things that you're making payments on or you have to maintain or spend money on, you know? Yeah. There's a community out in the middle of, like, Nevada or California or somewhere. Uh, it's like an abandoned RV park that, like, I think they call it, like, Freedom Park or something. And it's, like, old cement pads where there used to be buildings. It used to be a military post. Mm-hmm. And there's a community there of people that live there. And it's, like... Uh, they barter and trade. There's no money. They, you just set up camp there and just, like, fucking live. Live mm. as long as you want here. I don't, nobody gives a fuck. You know? There's no sheriff. There's no... Like, there's people in the community that are a little bit older, and they'll fucking, like, lay the law down if you get too fucking retarded. You yeah. know? But, like, there's people out there doing this. You know? There's people that are out there living that don't feel trapped. So what I'm getting to is, is if you have enough time to sit around and think about a fucking conspiracy... Where does it come from? You feel like they are holding you back. Well, who the fuck are they? You can do anything you want. Yeah. You could jump on a fucking sailboat and fucking sail all the way down to the tip of fucking South America and live off fish. You know, you can do it. You know? You don't have to go to fucking work tomorrow. You can go fucking do that. I mean, I think ultimately you're in control of everything. Yeah. To some extent, right? Yeah. Like... If you don't like your situation, there's things you can do to change it. You yeah. just have to be willing to 
uh, deal with the consequences of it or the emotions that come with it or sure. anything like that. You just have to be, have, you know, your resolve has to be the thing that You have to break out of structure. It. Yeah. You have to break out of yeah, the I mean, structure that you've created for yourself and you don't want to admit it. If I decide I don't I want to be wealthy, who's it up to to become wealthy? Yeah. Me. <laughs> you know? Like Well, personal responsibility is something that we're we're pushing so hard to get away from. And yeah. and it's not just like the conservatives will tell you that it's leftists. Leftists don't want to take responsibility for nothing, but they're full of shit. Right. Because I've met plenty of conservatives that, that collect welfare or don't marry their spouse so that they can get fucking uh, support for the kids through the government or they'll get uh, government housing, you know, and then like leech off the woman because she, she has these benefits. Like there's plenty of conservatives that I met that use the system to their advantage and, and you're not taking personal responsibility. You're not fixing your problems. You say that you believe in something, but you don't believe in shit. Right. So the structure that you find yourself stuck in was you. You walked into a puddle of fucking quicksand, and now you wonder, what the fuck? Who, who's trapped me here? You did. Yeah. It's you. You're fucking personally responsible. This is a deep fucking... We're going to have to call this one the deep deep. You know, like, <laughs> this is a fucking... Dude, anybody that thought we were telling jokes today, man, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I fucked up. I said something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think ultimately, like, if you don't like your situation or you don't like the way things are going, you got to change it. Yeah. You know, you can't sit there and blame them Yeah. yeah. for what your life is. Yeah. Like, if you have... Look, there's nothing worse in the world than having too much time on your fucking hands to do nothing. You know that old saying, Satan finds work for idle hands? Yep, yep. You got to get out there and you got to fucking, like, to me, like, and this is just me personally. I feel like work, whatever work is. But you know what, though? You know what's funny is sometimes it's also that whether it's working or just learning how to appreciate yeah. your your serenity. Find seren Dude, if you, if you don't have to work, if you don't have to work or you don't have to work very hard... Instead of sitting around like a fucking paranoid recluse and, like, worrying about, like, who's out to get me. Get involved in some kind of process. Dude, walk through the park and right. go, man, it is fucking beautiful today. And really, like, enjoy this little bit of time we have, yeah. you know? I don't know, man. I'll say this. I'll say this. And this is how, like, for me, this is all very relevant. A year ago, I went to the Outer Banks with my family. And we invited my cousin. And my cousin has a new baby. Uh, a fiance, two stepkids. Uh, he he kind of like, I was used to this weird structure of like, we go down there with my sister, my brother, their spouses, their kids, and everybody like contributed in some kind of way. And my cousin didn't do any of that. My cousin was just like doing his own thing, invited people over to the house, which I got really annoyed about. Uh, Moral of the story is, is I was also kind of losing my fucking mind because I've been working for like the last three years or more, six or seven days a week, just nonstop, no vacations, no weekends, just working my nuts off. So when we went to the Outer Banks, I was just like, high strung, went dude, on. I was you couldn't like, decompress. I was so anxious that I exploded. Yeah. And I had to realize, like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know Nothing's how to wrong. calm the fuck down. Yeah, you're just wound up. Yeah. And so, like, I felt really bad, and I apologized to everybody. And over the last year or so, I've been working on, like, I need to learn how to fucking slow down. And, yeah. and like, take a weekend and enjoy the weekend. And sit here, like today, it's a rainy day. Don't do anything. Go sit upstairs and watch movies with your kids and just relax. It's okay. It's okay right. to fucking but don't But too much move. of that is fucking brutal. Too much of it is brutal and you turn into a lazy fuck, you mm -hmm. know? Because then you don't know how to turn it back on, right. you know? And I have, I have people that I know that are like that. But I think that you have to find this balance. So, like, we bought a camper. That's mm -hmm. what the camper's for. The camper's for me to learn how to calm the fuck down. We went camping up in the mountains the other day, 
And everybody's walking up to me like, so this is the story. Let me tell you all the details so you know everything that's going on. So my wife is the, you know, she's the dog groomer. Her friend goes to this golden retriever retreat thing up in the mountains at this uh, kid's camp. It's closed down. The kids ain't there no more. But they let these people do their thing for the weekend. And it's all around the dogs. And they do all these activities with the dogs. Some of it's pretty cool. Like they have this lure course where this like... Uh, it's basically a bunch of plastic bags stuck to a rope that are looped around these this track system. And the dog runs and tries to catch it, you know? So like, uh, you know, like it's cool because we let the dogs do it. And they fucking run, man. They fucking chase the shit out of that thing. And then they... They do, like, uh, time trials to mm-hmm. see who's the fastest dog. I was, like, excited. I was like, this is fucking cool. I want to see how fast our dogs are, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm a race car guy. Why the fuck wouldn't I want to see yeah, how right. fast the dogs are? So, anyway, I was kind of quiet the whole weekend. Gabby's up there. She's hanging out with dog people. She's excited. She wants to go down to the lake, let the dogs play in the lake. And I'm, like, to myself. I'm, I'm like, ready to go back to the camper and just hang out there. So then, like, people around the camp are all asking, like, hey, you okay? Is everything all right? You know, and I'm like, dude, I'm fucking great, man. Like, I'm really good. Like, I'm actually, I feel really relaxed, you know? So then, like, her friend, Gabby's friend, are, are, like, asking me, like, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? And I'm like, I really did. I really, like, dude, you guys don't get it. But I don't, I don't normally relax. So, like, yes, I did relax. This was nice. This was great. You gave me a little corner in the back where everybody was away from. My kids were safe. They weren't going to get run over by a car. And they rode their little bikes on the road. It was awesome. It was fucking great, man. You know? So, if you're so wound the fuck up that you think that the earth is fucking flat, I highly recommend buying a camper Get out there and enjoy the flat earth. See the flat earth. Yeah. And just fucking smile, man. Just right. be happy. Whether it's flat or round or fucking trapezoid. Doesn't matter. You're here. Dude, doesn't matter. Light a campfire. Sit around and bitch about Biden's economy. You're here. You're queer. Get used to it. <laughs> All I'm saying. I'm just saying, if the... Think about this. The paradox of this. Calling the Ku Klux Klan faggots. I'm just saying... It really should offend the Ku Klux Klan. If you're a gay person and you don't think that that is hilarious... Well, you're kind of a part of the problem and you're really fucking things up. Because there is so much good comedy left on the table right here. The Ku Klux Klan and the neo-Nazis are faggots. I am saying this, not John. Attack me on social media. But I really don't think you should be offended. I think you should grab this as if it were a football that got fumbled on the field and fucking start running for the field goal, man, because this is good stuff. This is good stuff, man. We could really have some fun here. Wild. <sighs> I know. I'm a jerk Oof. off, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the offensive one. This is... <laughs> but yeah, I mean... I also... So when I was writing this joke, when I was like brainstorming on this, originally I was going to use... End bomb with the hard R. Oh no! Please. And don't. I was like, Nah, I don't know if I'm. I don't know uh, if I, I have the balls to do that. No. Well, but the thing is, if like... black people did it, if black, if the black community, if there was a black community, and the Ku Klux Klan was like, Man, we're gonna put our little hoods on and go walk through there. Yeah. And you guys started calling them the hard R's, and like, I don't know, like fucking just, just say like. Whatever racist people say about black turn the people, tables. turn the tables. Yeah. Dude, I think it would ruin it. I think it would ruin it. I think you know? it would make things fucking, like, exponentially worse. Like, it, you're really, like, I don't know. I just think it would, like, turn things into a real powder keg. A real Pier 6 brawl. Nah, I don't think thing. so. Nah? I, I think, think there's some extreme people out there, man. There are extreme people, but the problem is... Which nobody realizes. I mean, think about that old guy what that old wanted guy? to kill Biden and 
uh, Kamala Harris. I don't even know about this. They, well, the FBI killed him. Really? They like, yeah, like it was like a few weeks ago or whatever. Or I don't know if it was the FBI, CIA. I don't fucking know. But this guy was posting all over his social media. He's like fucking old, like in his 70s. Posting all over social media, his plans. I'm going to go here. I'm going to kill Biden. I'm gonna, and he had all this fucking artillery stockpiled and firearms and everything. And, and he I mean, told him exactly what he basically was Basically, just put it out there. Just put it out there, uh-huh. you know? And I guess they showed up at his door one day and kind of had a little bit of a shootout with them and ended up dead. Um, I think, like, there's people out there that are just, like, really, this is their identity. And it's... Fucking dumb. Yeah, it's silly, man. Like, why can't you just fucking just chill out? So just what's the, the adverse fuck? reaction? What's the end game? Yeah, well, that's... What is the end game? What do you hope to accomplish? So when you look at that, this is the problem with people not knowing how to play chess. That dumb motherfucker, what did you think was going to occur? Yeah. Did you not think that they were paying attention to you? Do you Dude, think if I didn't start posting something inflammatory on mine, they wouldn't come knocking at my door? I'm telling you right now, gay people are going to hear this podcast, and I'm going to hear something. Yeah. I'm going to hear something about this. And you know what? Well, because a, That's lot, of okay. pe- a lot of people really take that F word like... Yeah, well... The end all be all of like... Yeah, I it's know. it's as bad as the N word. Yeah, to some well, people. but it's not because you weren't enslaved for fucking four hundred years. Yeah, I get and that. You didn't you didn't have like a a, a fucking uh, but, a dictator in Germany that was throwing your bodies in a fucking gas chamber. There like, are you didn't, a lot of there, but you know but also like, and I'm not going against what you said. You're my boy. I love yeah, you. Yeah. But there's plenty of instances where people have lost their lives or were hurt. Or something because of something as silly as their sexual preference. I don't. I don't discredit that, and I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna dispute that. And I. I don't even have nothing against the gay community. No, First no, of all, let all. me just blatantly say that my intentions are not to attack the gay community. My intentions are. I wish. I wish people in the gay community, the ones that are willing to have a pissing contest with dumb motherfuckers would be crafty and clever about it and beat these people up verbally the way they're attempting to do to you. Oh, yeah. I think Because to me, the only way to solve a bully is is to beat him the fuck up. Punch him in the fucking mouth, right. And that's all I'm really saying here is, like, the Ku Klux Klan to me... So I talked to a woman the other day, a Jewish woman, sweet woman, really sweet person, and she was concerned that if Trump comes back into office, that uh, the acceptability of fucking neo Nazis and loudmouth bullshit white supremacists is going to be an uprise again, a new thing. Because she was she was scared, and I tried to explain to her, and I tried to I tried to say like, these are people people that like stomp their feet and they like wear these scary uh, Uniforms, slogans yeah. and bullshit. It's because they themselves are afraid. And they're trying to make you scared because it's a it's a way to help build their confidence. And it's all a pissing contest. It's a strength in numbers kind of thing. It's bullshit. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you can just laugh in their face and say how fucking stupid they are, in a pissing contest, the rule is, the rule has always been and always will be, The first person to get mad loses. That's the way a pissing contest works. Nah, nah, you're fucking stupid. And then two little kids are going back and forth. The first one that gets mad loses. Then the other one walks away laughing. Mm -hmm. It's the same with trolls on the internet. It's the same with everything in life. I got a reaction out of you. Fucking Biden and Trump standing on a stage arguing back and forth like two fucking Alzheimer's patients... One of you is just pissing off the other one, and then Biden's like, come on, man! Dude, dude, yeah. you look like a fucking, you look like a dummy. Yeah. You look fucking dumb, you know? And and both of you are dumb. It's it's dumb watching this whole spectacle. It's so, like... so really, like, 
me using that word. I get what you, you know? listen. I understand your context. Sure, of course you do. One hundred percent. The problem is, is we have listeners out that there right. that might hear that and go, "Oh my God, he is such an asshole." I know what he meant, but I still think it was just too much. But this is the thing: I sincerely don't believe in censoring. I don't. Oh no, me neither. And that no. means because I've met, I've met black people that were perfectly okay with hearing white people drop the n bomb, and I was fucking shocked. Really? I was blown mm. away by what I saw, and they were the ones that explained to me. This guy in particular, not they. It's 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 one guy that I know. Uh, he was smart enough. He was actually a fucking uh, law student, you know. So like, he was smart enough to understand and know that I'm not giving that word value. Yeah. Once you give you know? it power, you've given it power. And that to me is that says everything, you know. Like if. If you hold it to a value, then it's it's like the dollar bill. Mm-hmm. We all think it's worth a certain amount. What happens if we stop believing? What if everybody decided, fuck you, I'm using Bitcoin now? Yeah. You know? It would be worth nothing. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't It'd matter how much they print. It just mm-hmm. means nothing because we don't believe in it no more. You could write your grocery list on it. Throw it away when you're done. Dude, when I was in uh, Kosovo, a little kid handed me uh, 10 billion Yugoslavic whatever their dollar is, you know, like a, a one bill that mm-hmm. had like, I don't know, fucking eight or nine zeros on it behind a one. <laughs> and he was trying to trade it to me for a dollar. And you think to yourself, this was worth an ungodly amount of money at one point. Mm-hmm. Think about the, the psychology behind that. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. At one point, well, that's when what this our all started, like now. Yeah. You go, you, you, the conversion rate of our dollar It's not worth shit anywhere else. Well, that's scary to me because even when you look at uh, wealth in our country, right now, billionaires are popping up all over the place. Billionaires. Something that you and I once thought was like... Unattainable. That is the wealthiest of the wealthiest elites. And now there are celebrities. There are people that are just like... Oh yeah, man. I just I made my billion. I'm cool, you know. And and to me, if you're seeing more and more billionaires, wait until the first time you see a trillionaire, mm-hmm. you know. That's when it's going to be like holy shit. Yeah. I used to like it used to be a goal of mine to be a millionaire. There are millionaires all over this fucking neighborhood. Mm. There are the people that have a million dollars. The the union guys that I work with tell me that when they retire, they're annuity will be worth a couple million dollars wow and you think to yourself that used to be rich you used to be a rich guy not a blue collar guy that's what the fucking that's what the stockbrokers and the lawyers and doctors used to have that's not what we had but but it is now so it doesn't mean shit to be a millionaire anymore it doesn't mean nothing you know i don't know man i don't know they're out to get us they Uh, flattened the earth. I think what happened, (laughs) there was this big giant lizard alien fucking guy and he took our our round earth because it originally was round. I think this, let's change the narrative. It was originally round. Yeah, they flattened it out. Somebody accidentally sat on a little bit. But then the guy was like, you know what? This kind of worked out in our favor. And he took the iron and heated it the fuck up and just kind of flattened it out keep a little it, more. Keep it flat. So it wasn't like oval shaped. We don't want mm-hmm. like a we don't want like a piece of dough here. We want it fucking flat. You know? We want to be able to skip a skip it across the pond, you know? Yes. So I don't know. This episode was fucking dumb. It was crazy. I offended so many people. <sighs> <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a faggot, you know? You are. You really are. <laughs> I just want to go on record to say that I did not say the F word once in this episode. I did not. I laughed. I I'll... wonder if what if the algorithm's gonna catch it and delete the whole thing. I get fucking screwed yeah. so often on like context. Oh, uh, sorry, but we gotta take your show down off of Apple because I'm going to have to go through and edit this one and, like, actually put bleeps over the, uh, the F-bombs. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be like, what the fuck were you doing, man? Hey, look, we had good intentions. We meant well. <laughs> I just think calling the Ku Klux Klan the F-word, I'll be good this time. I think calling them a bunch of F-words 
I think is hilarious. I think it's not, it shouldn't be offensive to the gay community. It should totally be used to combat these fucking morons. Dude, who has time? Think about this. Let's think about the psychology behind a Ku Klux Klan member. Yeah. Uh, you're sitting around. You just finished up working. You're you're some jerk-off security guard somewhere. You're grumbling about, oh, fucking Biden's economy. And, and you're like, you're fucking cleaning your 1911 pistol. You know, like you're, you're like, you know what? <sighs> I got to go to the dry cleaner and pick up my fucking robes. Because later on tonight, me and the boys are going to meet up. And think about that. Like, how, does your, how is your life? Like, I really wonder. How is your, your life? Your downtime is based on anger. Dude, every, you walk around grumbling about every fucking thing. Yeah. And then you're like, you're like you, do you seriously plan out? Like, okay, all right, tonight... Tonight, I'm going to wear, like, these robes right here with this hood. And, like, you know, I'm going to wear the ones with the little purple stripes and shit. And their names, their names, yeah. dude, their names are gay, too. Their little titles that they have for Grand Wizard and fucking... Yeah, I wonder if, like, when you get made, like, the Grand Wizard, you go home and you're like, Honey, I'm the Grand Wizard now. Dude, is he super excited? Is he Probably. Like, he's, like, jerking off in his robes. It's he's, like, like oh my jerking God. off to black tranny porn. <laughs> like <laughs> walking in... <laughs> Hey, honey, who wants to fuck the Grand Wizard? Because you're looking at him. Yeah. Well, he goes home to his gay lover, and he's like, you know, he's like, listen, you know, I know this isn't your thing, but I'm really excited about what I accomplished today. (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, Can I belittle the Ku Klux Klan a little more? I really enjoy it. I'm sure you could. It's like, it's like uh, Nazi movies, like how they're making all these Nazi movies about killing Nazis. I feel like we should do the same with the Ku Klux Klan. These are fucking clowns. They're assholes. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of outdated, right? It's fucking dumb. You're a waste of time. It really is. I mean, it's like... I just don't see how it's... Like, you're not accomplishing Dude, what, anything. what is your mission? Is your yeah. mission to, like, make us all white again? Like, we're going, oh, we're, we're going to kick them all out. Do you think you're accomplishing you're anything? You're not kicking anybody out. Do you... you the whole... Dude, the fucking... Uh, the the phrase "go back to Africa" is the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my life. Listen, nobody's going back to Africa, bro. Nobody. <laughs> go back to Europe. Yeah. You fucking idiot. Like, right. It's go the over to Europe. Shit I've go ever heard. go move back to France and tell them how like how fucking right wing conservative yeah. you are and see if they give a shit. They're gonna tell you to get the fuck out, you stupid American. Yeah. You know. They hate us over there. France, they do. Portugal, they like us, but. Portuguese has brown people, so they're not going to go there, hmm. you know? They can go to England. There's a couple, like, fucking retards in England that might, like... They might be like, all right, well, fucking the Yankees here. There's a lot gonna... of... There's a large... Um, I think it's, like, a large Middle Eastern uh, yeah. thing going on in England Europe as well. is a pretty diverse place, yeah. you know? You can go to Germany and probably find some neo-Nazis that are hiding in fucking shitty bars, and they're complaining about the same stupid shit... Yeah. But, like, ultimately, as a movement, oh, like a white supremacy movement, dude, you're a dying breed. Nobody gives a fuck, dude. Nobody gives a shit yeah. about your stupid inbred thoughts, you know? Like, you're fucking wasting people's time. I'm too busy trying to, like, feed my family and make money and create generational wealth to give a shit about your opinion. Yeah. You know? Oh, you made a website. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Let's go make fun of that shit later, you know? It's a you're Listen, a fucking jerk off. It's hard, man. It's hard to get anybody to pay attention to you. You know what I mean? Just go out there Dude, and do even, your fucking thing. And and so like ultimately, like when you go back to like that movie uh, American History X and mm-hmm. you really the last line in the fucking movie by uh Edward uh, Furlong? Yes. He, he it like really, quotes like I think he quotes Martin Luther King or something, right? Hatred is baggage. Oh yeah, definitely. It dude, definitely how is. How much time are you gonna waste being angry, walking around, angry? And he, and that goes for the opposite side of the political spectrum. Everybody. So like, I drop the. He F-bombs. who angers me controls me. Dude, you walk around mad that I called the Ku Klux Klan the F word. You're angry now. The Ku Klux Klan's angry. Everybody's angry, and guess what? I'm laughing. Chris is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. He who angers me controls me. Well, that's why I'm, I enjoy being 
a amateur comedian because like <laughs> I I can't call myself a comedian in good sense because I feel like first of all I'm a coward. I've never stood on stage, you know. And second of all, it's a lot like me saying that I'm an artist. You're an artist. You're an accomplished artist in my oh, opinion. I don't know you know, about that. I'm not an artist, dude. I'm not. I don't. Well, fucking, what makes you accomplished? Being published. Uh, in my eyes, the fact that you sold at least one yeah, piece I guess of artwork. Yeah, they do say once you've been published, you're a professional. I believe so. So I guess I'm a professional. You're a professional I don't feel artist. like one, but... Yeah, well, you're a starving artist. Just oh, doesn't Starving oh. doesn't make a difference between professional and unprofessional. Hmm. It just means that you've made more of an effort than I have. Yeah. You know? Well, And whatever. as for... Um, Technically, I'm a professional podcaster. My mom donated, like, I don't know, five bucks to my Patreon account, like, I don't oh, yeah? know, three years ago. So, I'm a goddamn professional <laughs> podcaster. I'm technically a professional comedian. There you, you go. Know, I made five fucking dollars for my mommy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how fucking ridiculously pathetic I sound right now, but... <laughs> it's something. <laughs> Uh, at least, the, uh, at least I'm not as pathetic as a flat earther Ku Klux Klan member. All right. You thought I was going to say the f word, didn't you? No. I thought about I'm, it. I've become I thought about it. to it now. I, I thought know. about. It. I definitely was going to like. I was going to just be like, burp, burp, just fucking, just, <laughs> burp, just fucking say it. You know. How long have we been going with this? We're ready, man. We're done. Yeah. You want to hear some music? Yes. Thanks for listening to Renaissance Manchild. Renaissance Manchild is a Yardbird Tuna production. If you enjoyed the show, please like, follow, and share. Any ideas or suggestions, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or Instagram. Oh, shit! Mm-hmm. <laughs> you talk good. <laughs> <laughs>